Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to play around with using multiple ink colors on a press plate. I have this Press Bouquet Better Press Plate and I'm using two different um, Better Press ink collections. I'm using the Flower Garden ink set and specifically from that set I'm using Leaf, which is the green, and then Azalea and Strawberry, which are the corally pink colors. The next set that I'm using is called Nature Tones, and from that set I'm using the Saffron, which is the yellow, French Blue, and the Wild Berry, which is the brighter pink. I'm doing all of this on Better Press cardstock. Now, you may notice on my Better Press system around the outside of my gray mat, I have some of the yellow tape. Now, with that mat, it's not attached to the base of the Better Press system, and it has a tiny little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to be putting different ink colors on my plate and putting it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, machine several different times, and I want to make sure that that base, my plate, don't wiggle, because if they do shift and wiggle a little bit, I'm not going to get the um, impression exactly where I had my last impression. So in order to avoid that in any way, I've been had my mat taped down. I know there was someone that commented on it and noticed it. And that's the reason I was playing around to see if that eliminated any wiggle room with my better press and it seems to have worked. So for my image, I'm going to be inking in different ink colors running it, putting the top, the clear part on my base, running it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 and just building up the image that way. I thought about using all of the ink colors at once, but I wasn't quite sure how long the Better Press ink would stay. Um, would it, I didn't want it to dry out on the plate. So by doing it this way, I can make sure that nothing is drying out. So that first color I used was the leaf, which was the green, and then I used the saffron, which was the yellow in the center of the flowers and for some of the smaller flowers. Next, I'm using the French blue, and I'm doing that on some of the other flowers. And as I'm doing it, I'm just building that image up and up and getting the different colors in the different areas. Now, these are not going to be inked perfectly. Even though I have small ink pads here, it's still fairly hard. There's so much detail in this image, so it's fairly hard to keep that ink only on the exact spot where it's supposed to go. I kind of liked the way it turned out anyways because it looks a little bit more watercolor-ish. I mean, obviously it's not watercolor, it's not a watercolored image in any way, but because that ink isn't necessarily only pristine and perfectly in one area, it just kind of gave it a cool vibe that I really liked. So the next color that I'm using is the azalea and the strawberry. I can never remember which one is the lighter one and which is the darker one, but these are the corally pink colors. This is something that works really, really well because these ink pads are small. So you can get fairly close to exactly where you're wanting them to be. If you had larger ink pads, it would be a lot harder to be very precise or be close with your ink pads. So you can try it with larger ink pads. They likely will work. It's just going to be a little bit harder to get it only in the areas that you're wanting. And you could easily take a soft cloth and wipe the ink off if you wanted to be a little bit more precise with it. I found that by being able to put this through the machine with different ink colors, I could just really build that color up. And I could also pick and choose which colors I wanted to brighten. Like I took just took the French blue and added it to the bases of the leaves just to get a little bit of a deeper green. I don't have another green of the Better Press ink. I'm not actually sure if there is one. So I just wanted to give that a little bit, almost of a shadow and a little bit of a different look. The last wild berry, the brightest pink, I used that on the larger flowers just to brighten up the color around the outside areas. So I really like how the colors build and blend with each other and um, work well with each other. And you can change the color tones just by adding more ink and running it through your machine again. And in the past, when I've put it through my machine multiple times, I have found that the image shifted sometimes, not all the time, just a little bit. And I found with this project, because I had that gray mat taped so that it wouldn't move, I had absolutely no issues with anything moving. Once you have your image exactly how you want, I can take some archival cleaner and I can clean any ink off my base there. And then I can also clean it off my plates. 
So here is the final result with the image and you can see how what I mean when I say it kind of has a bit of a watercolor vibe to it. The ink colors are not exactly pristine and, and set in one area and um, inked perfectly. They kind of run into each other a little bit and I really love that look. So for my sentiment for this card, I grabbed the Let's Celebrate Pre Sentiments press plate set. This one has some coordinating dies so for some of the scripty sentiments. And I love the variety in this set. I chose a Happy Birthday Wishes one that has some little bit of a scripty look to it. And then for the smaller sentiments, I chose the one that said uh, Happy Birthday to one of the few people whose birthday I can remember without a Facebook reminder. I ended up not using this sentiment at the bottom. And the main reason is because when I die cut the happy birthday wish the sentiment, I had intended originally to put it on the front of the card, but it was too big and it covered too much of the flowers. So I ended up putting it on the inside of the card. But what I am doing here is taking several different colors and inking my sentiment in different colors. So for the happy birthday wishes sentiment, I started with the saffron and then I went to, I think it was azalea, and then I went to wild berry. So I've got a blend from yellow to pink. And for the bottom sentiment, I did green at the top and then blue at the bottom. So it's a great way to coordinate your sentiments with your image by using multiple inks as well. The one thing that I would suggest doing, and I do this when I work with glitter as well, start if you're doing the same or if you're inking with different colors at the same time, start with the lightest color and work your way to the darkest color. If you have some light ink on a dark pad, it's not going to change it in any way. But if you happen to have a light pad and get some dark ink on it, you might see some differences and it might um, stain your pad a little bit. So by working from light to dark, you don't have to worry about that at all. But I love the little bit of a rainbow ombre-ish effect that that gives it. It's just something just a little bit different. And like I said before, it ties in to the front of the card really, really well because we have multiple ink colors there as well. So I took the coordinating die, taped it in place, ran it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine to die cut that out. And then when I go to put it on or place it on the front of the card, you can see how it's just far too big for it. So before I do that, I'm going to clean my plates off as well. I tend to like to try, and I don't necessarily always do this, to clean my plates and make sure that they're clean before I put them away so that I don't have remaining ink on them. Sometimes the plates will get stained a little bit, but by having that excess ink off of there, I can make sure when I ink them with my for my next project that I'm getting the colors that I actually want on there. So you can see how placing that happy birthday wishes on that front of the card, it just covers far too much. So at one point, I thought I would maybe use one of the part of this small sentiment here on the front of the card. But in the end, I don't use it. I end up using one of the cheers to you sentiments that I had created with a previous video with the better press registration um, released this month. So I had some extra sentiments from that and it just worked to put that on the front of the card and then have it the happy birthday wishes on the inside of the card. So for my card base for this, I chose a light blue that brought out the blue flowers in my image. And then I chose a coral for the mat that worked well with the corally colored flower that I have in the center there. So I'm gluing all of that down with some Barely Art glue and a fine tip bottle, and then put my acrylic block on top of that to hold that down nice and flat while I glue the next piece down. I chose that same coral color for the inside of my card and it's just gonna tie that all in there and I glued my sentiment right down to that. When I have a die cut sentiment, I tend not to put it on the inside of my card without anything else. And by having that matte, it just kind of ties everything in there. So this is the sentiment here from the Cheers to You sentiment that I had done in a previous video and it just says you're the best. So that's gonna go on the front of the card and it'll say you're the best and then on the inside, it'll say happy birthday wishes. I did ink that with that French blue just to give it a little bit of something that will make it pop a little bit more on the front of the card. And then I glued that down flat on the front of my card. You could easily glue, cut some extra of those little flag pieces and prop that up, like put a couple below that so that it has a little bit more dimension to it, but I chose not to for this one. 
The last step, I chose some stickles and just dotted them in the centers of some of the open flowers and let that completely dry. It's just going to give it a little bit of a sparkle, a little bit of a different texture, and just finish off that front there. So here is the finished card. I absolutely love the color of those images with the multicolored inks. I think it looks really, really well. And it's just a fun way to change up your card and your design just a little bit by using those multiple inks. Thank you so much for taking your time and spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic day.